Viewers, welcome to another edition of the Coach's Desk with your host, Coach Menzi. And we have with us on set today, Natalia White. Youth Olympic champion, over 200 meters. World Championship 4x100 meter relay gold medalist. Miss White, welcome to the Coach's Desk. Good to have you. Good to have you on set with us. And we're going to get right into it. By the way, before we do that, how are you doing? I'm good. Okay. So, here, but everything else is fine. Okay, that sounds good. Better than the, the snow that is happening, especially over there in Texas. All right. Now, I want you to introduce yourself to our viewers just to give them a little um, background of who Natalia White is. Um, okay, I'm Natalia White, class student of San Diego High, um, went to Auburn University, then to Florida Atlantic University for a year, now um, pro Puma athlete. All right, awesome, awesome. Now, you're talking about you are a pro athlete. Um, why track and field? Well, honestly, um, those who know me um, since high school will know that track and field was not my first choice. So mm -hmm. I would rather say, like Mr. Goburn always said, my high school coach, track and field chose me. I didn't choose it. <laughs> but um, in all honesty, um, when I just started track, um, it was just for fun. Um, I used to play netball. Mm -hmm. um, primary school and then I went to PE, um, ran, I beat some boys and the coach was like, oh, you need to come down um, to track practice um, at lunchtime. And then I think grade five or six, I broke the 300 meter record in primary school. Then I went on to San Diego High. I was doing very well. And then I think around fifth, sixth form. I mean, coaches always saw the potential in me, but I just thought, oh, you know, I go to practice every day. I train hard. That's why I run fast. And then I didn't really take it that serious that, hey, I want to become a professional one day. It was really just something to do every day. And then um, I found out that it could be an opportunity to get through school, through college. And I was like, okay, might as well just take the shot. And then um, after going to college, um, my first year in college, um, I didn't do so well. I think I was injured. Um, first indoor, I didn't run the first indoor. Um, went on to outdoor, made made it to the finals for um, All America. Made it to the finals. Pulled my hamstring in the four by one heat. Um, following the next year, came back, came third in the 60 meters indoor, um, went to outdoor, came second in the 100 meters. And then I was like, you know what? Maybe I need to take this thing uh, more seriously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then um, transferred to SAU and I think I was still doing pretty good being that um, I was the best athlete there. Um, they didn't have much um, athletes that were, I'm not going to say slow, but there weren't athletes that really wanted to do track. They okay. were just, you know, there for the scholarship. Uh -huh. I was still doing well there. And the world championships was coming up and I was like, you know what? Maybe I should put in something more extra yes, yes not just do what the coaches tell me to do go to practice every day give it more um made the team and then after that i was like you know what i'm going for the olympics so i made the decision uh -huh. to um stop going to school and focus solely on making it to the olympics last year and then you know corona came yes yes um, 
no, honestly, I really felt like I was on the road to making it last year. Corona mm. came. I know everybody was disappoint- disappointed. So was I. Yes. But, you know, maybe it was just God's way of giving everybody a second time to put in even more right. than what they did last year. So here I am today. Okay. Trying to get the Olympics. Okay, good. So the main goal again this season is to make it to the Olympics. All right. Now, um, we'll be talking about that um, not too long. But tell us about your biggest influence. Who's your biggest influence in, in taking up the sport? Um, I don't really have, like, an influence, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I mean... I admired my mom was the one that was into track. She always watched sports. She mm-hmm. used to play uh, netball and volleyball. I think that's where I got athletics from. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, I grew up watching Bernica Campbell, um, um, Cheryl and Simpson. Um, I don't think I really watched much of sports when Marilyn Hockey was running. Right. I heard about her. Um, Karen, then Karen. I met Karen in college. She's really a great athlete. Great athlete. She was very motivating. I I love Karen. Um, I met Shellyan um, personally um, last year. Um, I think it was before Worlds when I was running a bit during the summer. Uh-huh. Well, not last year, but 2019. Right, right. Yeah, and I met Elaine. Elaine is also a really good influence. So I don't really have that one person. Right. I them all. They're mm-hmm. really good athletes, and I look up to all of them. Okay, awesome. Now, I want you to tell us, roll back the curtains, and tell us about your years performing at Boys and Girls Champs for St. Jacob High School. <laughs> Um, I had good and bad years at St. Jacob High. Um, anybody that knew me personally knew that I struggled with a lot of injuries. Uh-huh. Um, even though I didn't love, love track to become an Olympian, I still took track, um, serious. Uh, class four, I think I was really good. I think I ran 11.9. In class four, on my first year, class three, and I think that a Milo race. Um, Milo Western relay. Thank you. You're not. You're not that old, Natalie. I at, at GC. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was at GC, but there's so much at me. It's like there's so much you can remember in detail. Right, right. Um, I think I finished high school. The, my most memorable year, though, was first year class one. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I won gold in the 100, 200, 4 by one and 4 by 4 Right. So that was the most memorable year. I remember I even fainted that year after the 4 by 4 <laughs> So definitely cannot forget that. <laughs> um, but that was my most memorable year. Awesome. I finished high school. Um, I also made the world youth when I was probably 15, 16. Yeah, that was in 2014. I was younger than the rest. Yeah. I made the world juniors. I was younger than the rest. And I also made the world youth. And I won 200 meters. Um, that was in um, China that year. Right. Um, we'll be talking about that as well. In the high school running, PR, went to college running 23, 35, and 11.55. All right. All right. So you, you, you performed um, pretty well for St. Diego at, at Girls Champs, and you actually one of the most outstanding student um, athletes who would have passed through St. Diego as well. So kudos to you there. Now, is Champs a good platform for young athletes who want to make it in the sport? 
Do you believe that? Definitely. Why? Mm -hmm. Um, let me not just say chance. I think Jamaica overall. Right, right. There's so many talents in Jamaica, and I realized that when I went to college, um, my first year, and I didn't compete in indoor. I didn't have all that um races in to get me prepared for competition. Mm -hmm. And I realized that even though I used to find it annoying going to trap meets every weekend when it came to January in Jamaica, that is what got you ready for champ and got you at your best to perform when it came around to champ, but for those um five, four to five days. And um after that year and it rolled around to my second year in college, um, I realized that I had to keep my body fit enough to compete so I would be at my best when it came around to the real competition in college. Because when you were in high school, going to the meet every weekend, um, that helped you to see where you were, you are. In um, to evaluate the, the standard that you are going into town. And then at time, all when you make it to that semi-final, even the heat sometimes are pretty tough because there are so much quality athletes in Jamaica. Uh -huh. And I think that even uh, make athletes work harder because they want to be number one uh -huh. out of the best. So I think that pushed the athletes to train harder, to work harder. And I think that's even um, one of the reasons why Jamaicans are some of the best athletes in the world. Right. And and Vernica Campbell did say it as well that Trumps would have prepared her competitively, uh, mentally for, for her, her, her long career and the amount of competitions, the amount of tough competition that she went up against on the world scene. And she was already prepared for that while at Chams because you know Vernica had her run ins with, with some tough athletes as well. So indeed yeah. It is a good platform for young athletes. Well said. Now, you made mention of your world youth and your world, in particular, your world um, Olympic youth championship um, gold medal. You want to elaborate on that because that was done in 2014, um, the summer of 2014. You want to walk us through that experience of being the first Jamaican female to win a world youth Olympic. It was fun, <laughs> that I have to say, because usually um, you feel pressured going to something that big. Mm -hmm. I think that was one of the things that made me perform well, because I wasn't under a lot of pressure. Right. Um, staying calm, enjoying the experience. I think what made me do well was because I enjoyed myself. Mm -hmm. But it was a very good experience because usually it's the biggest competition would be Carissa, which is just within Caribbean countries. Mm -hmm. so against the world was something different for me, and it was a it wasn't a terrifying experience. Like, like looking back at it, I think that wow, I should have been terrified, but it wasn't a terrifying. Um, experience uh, it was cool going to a, a different country traveling far um different coaches stuff like that different people from different schools different people around the world different food different environment so there's a lot of things that can throw athletes off um being in a different atmosphere right i think the most important thing is staying cool calm and collected as mr Grover would say <laughs> yes and, and i think that's what um made me compete um and came out of this all right now uh, well said natalia interesting comments there all right now I want you to also share that experience. Two years ago, you went to the World Championship and you ran on the 
4x100 meter team and you won yourself a gold medal so you are a world championship gold medalist talk to us about that experience working and sharing um, batons with a, 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 a Elaine Thompson, a Shelley and Fraser Price. Talk to us about that. So, um, after I made the team, I was saying, oh, okay, I made the team, I made the team. And then um, we came back um, abroad and we started sharing and preparing. And then we started, I, I was kind of thinking, well, how are we going to do? It's a relay. When are we going? We're going to have like probably a week before the championship to prepare for band and stuff like that. And then I was like, you know what? We're Jamaican. We've been doing this since high school. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember <laughs> the rough time not getting band passes. Um, correct and i was like you know what um i think i think you'll get it right i think you'll get it right i mean i was thinking um elaine janelle and shelly they already um run on a team together so i'm like okay i'm the outstanding one i i have to get it right <laughs> But then in my experience from doing back and passes over the years, right. Jamaica, Jamaica usually have athletes doing good band passes. And I mean, um, we've been to Carista before, um, running with different um, teammates from different schools and we got it right. right. So I, mean, I think I had it in the bag, but then it was my first, uh, I would say professional outing. And it was a little bit nerve wracking because you know you don't want to make any mistakes as a rookie. Mm -hmm. You don't want to get blamed. Right, right. No, it, it, it was a little bit of pressure, but I mean, Shelly and Elaine, they're really cool. Even though they're professionals, they're really cool. Um, they make you feel comfortable, and you know, they let you feel at home, like your family, and like you know, you can be cool, relaxed, no pressure. So it was a it was a good um experience. Looking forward to, to being on the team again with them um Olympics this year. All right, great. And uh, talking about that race, you you actually popped the blocks. A wicked start there in that final. Yes, you 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 really gave a a a, a very good lead off, and that would have um, propelled the team to do pretty well. Of course, you know that the baton is important in going around. So, but we can't take anything away from that lead off that you uh, did for the team. Congratulations again! Now, how do you see your chances now? Of course, you mentioned the COVID situation. You mentioned that you'd have to do extra work. Sometimes you don't just train. Uh, you have to go beyond, above and beyond, to ensure that you stay in shape. Um, how do you see your chances? Because, of course, there are a lot of young athletes coming up on the female side. You have a Kiara Grant, you have a Kevona Davis, there's a Brianna, there's a Shanti Moore, um, a Kira Nugent. How do you see your chances going up against these young, vibrant um, females? Even though you're young, you know, not taking away your youthfulness. <laughs> Everything comes down to the day um, mm -hmm. of competition. Um, really, it's who is most calm um, and ex execute the race best mm -hmm. of the day. So I think I have um, just as much chance as anybody else. We're all, I assume we're all training very hard because <laughs> we all want to make it. So yes. it's about on the day and who execute. And run the best race. But in, in in on on the mental side, do you think that you're in a good uh frame of mind to capitalize on on making that team? Definitely. Um, if the mentality wasn't there, it wouldn't make no sense. with training. They all come hand in hand. Um, working hard, and the mentality. 
okay good and uh what event do you uh, are you th um supposedly doing um at the trials are you certain which one you're doing yet no i'm not certain okay don't want to give out any information to your competitors <laughs> i understand i was a pretty good um 200 meter runners um mm -hmm. that's what um i got the gold in at the youth olympics right right and stuff that happened um along the within the years along the way that has um prohibited me from running the 200 as much as i used to uh -huh. but it is still a contest, um, contest that, yeah, the 200. All right, cool. Now, uh, finally, uh, Natalia, before we go, um, I want you to share an encouraging word to a young athlete out there who, who, who is thinking about becoming a pro athlete. Um, I want you to just share a, a some level of, of, of encouragement to them so that they know that it can happen in spite of or despite of challenges that they might face. Okay, I mean, um, you could take my experience um, as a motivation. Um, every single year that I've run track in high school, I've had some of I mean, I had lower back, I've had knee, I've had um, in step, I've had a half spring, <laughs> I've had really bad shin splints to a point where it, um, they were almost fractured. So, I mean, it's always about picking yourself back up, um, knowing that everything happens for a reason. It's always about picking yourself back up. Um, everything happens for a reason. Working hard. If it's something that you really want, then just go for it. All right. Well said, Natalia. And of course, we wish you all the best going forward. We hope, well, we're, we're not hoping. We know that the Olympics will be held and we are looking forward to seeing you on that team. Uh, of course, um, we would have had the chance of, of, of working close with you in the past. And we know your work ethics and we definitely believe in your talent. And we, we, we are certain that um if once you execute the way that you should execute we believe that you will be on that plane to tokyo so all the best natalia Thank continue you. to stay safe in this uh pandemic uh okay. continue to, to to train hard do the necessaries your nutrition and all of that we know that you're a pro athlete now you know all of that but i'm just reiterating the point and again we wish you all the best here from the coach's desk and thank you for joining us. And any final words you want to share before you go? Uh, just um, for everybody watching, stay safe. Um, take the necessary precautions. Wear your mask. Wash your hands. And even though it seems you might not get sick right now, but I've known um, a few persons that have um, been saying, oh, you know, I haven't gotten the corona yet, blah, blah, blah. But Two of my friends just got it for the first time um, last week. So keep taking your supplements, vitamin C, um, to enhance your immune system and stuff like that. All right. Well said. Thanks again for tuning in, uh, viewers out there. Thanks uh, for, for always choosing the coach's desk. And thanks again to Natalia White, uh, World Youth Olympic 200-meter champion, World Championship 4 by 100 meter gold medalist for stopping by at the coach's desk thanks again mm -hmm.